In this video we're going to talk about software design. We're going to start with the, a few fundamental concepts of design theory, move into the goals of design, and then uh, finish up with a loose outline of one possible approach to creating a design. There are many different ways to construct design out there. We're just going to talk about one. So starting with our design theory concepts, the first important one is abstraction. You want to consider your problem and make sure you're always using the language of the problem environment. The three basic types of problem abstraction are procedural abstraction, where you talk about what's going to happen in what order, your sequence of instructions. Data abstraction, so what kind of information you're going to have to store and control abstraction. So the specific control mechanisms like pseudocode that talk about you know your if else, your loops, your function calls, things like that. After you have some abstraction, you're going to want to refine it over and over again, elaborate and continue to pro provide more detail. Another important design theory concept is modularity. You want to take your big problem, your big program, and break it down into smaller, easier parts. This is where making good choices for functions to define is important. You want to break the big problem down into small parts, write a function for each part. It, this will help you isolate your errors and make your code easier to understand. The last theory concept that we're going to include here is software architect architecture. This is the hierarchical structure of your program. What components do you need? How do they interact with each other? How do they pass data between them? The goal you should have in mind is creating a document in the end that is correct, understandable, efficient, and maintainable. You want to ensure that you're meeting all explicit requirements and any implicit or added requirements that come about later. The goal is to create a guide for the people that are going to be writing the code, testing the code, and supporting the finished product. In a class, you're going to be the one designing and creating and testing the code. But if you ever are developing commercial software, you probably are not going to be doing all of those steps. And so it's going to be crucial if you're the designer, to create a design that will make the actual programmer's job easier. Finally, your design should be providing a complete picture of what this, this software is going to look like when it's finished. Make sure you're talking about the data that needs to be stored, the functions that need to be written, and how they're going to work. In order to create a design, I would say that the first thing you should focus on is abstraction, both of the procedural kind and the data kind. And so you want to read the problem statement, project specifications, requirements document thoroughly. Understand what you're being asked to do. And anytime you're confused, go back and see if that question is answered in the document that's already been provided. Once you have an understanding of the problem, you're going to want to start thinking about what kind of information needs to be stored. Can you group that data into related buckets? And these could become your classes later, or once you start refining in the next pass-through, you might decide you need to combine into fewer classes or separate into more classes. But it's good to just get one list down now and possibly start grouping, even if that's going to change over time. Finally, once you understand what information you need, you should start writing a high-level algorithm for the program in plain English and think about what has to happen. Meaning that our two main questions of the initial pass at design are what needs to be stored and what has to happen with that data. Once you finish that, you could start refining your design. So you want to provide more detail and begin to actually modularize and break into parts. Your software architecture and your procedural abstraction will start to take shape. So you want to go back and revisit your data list, your, your buckets that are possibly classes. Can you give them names? Do you know what specific individual pieces of data will need to be stored and what methods you'll need to be able to perform on those pieces of data? 
go back and revisit the high-level algorithm you've already written and see if you could start modularizing, picking out pieces that can work independently of the other ones. These are your functions. Then go back and look at everything again. Actually write down the names of the classes you're going to be using and the descriptions of all possible class attributes and instance attributes. Write down function signatures for each class method, identifying the name of the method, the parameters, and the return values. You'll also want to write down function signatures for all other functions that you need that don't live inside a class, just those modular chunks from the high-level algorithm that you've already written. And finally, think about the flow of your main program. Write down high-level pseudocode that shows the structure of the program, but now start integrating the other pieces you were just working on. What class instances need to be created? What class methods will need to be called and other functions will need to be called? And how? You don't have to have all the details worked out. In particular, you don't need to have all of your local variables thought about, but you should be writing some pseudocode in plain English with programming constructs thrown in when you need to think about the logic of how things are going to work. Your branching statements, your loops, your function calls. Finally, if you haven't already, you should be determining the data type of all the data that you've been thinking about. In the end, you should have something that's correct, understandable, efficient, and maintainable, that meets the requirements that were set out for you, and that makes writing the code much, much easier than starting from scratch. In the next video, we'll look at an example or two, and then you'll be able to work on it on your own.